Hi guys. Hi everyone. I hope that you guys can hear and see us okay. Let me go into the chat just to make sure. Let's see, because it always takes a few seconds and I always feel like so, um, <laughs> I feel so crazy because, um, you know, you never know if people are on. So if you guys could type a one, if you can hear and see me okay. Hi, Shelly, Shelby, hi, Dami. Hi, Simply Nessa. Hi, Tanya, Jessica. Hi, everyone. How exciting. Let's just give everybody a few minutes to get into the chat. And I need to organize my windows because I have a lot going on. <laughs> okay, everybody's typing once. Perfect. Hi, guys. Welcome, welcome. I'm so excited, okay, for this live stream. I have been thinking about this like all week. I'm, I'm so stoked to introduce you guys to my friend. Um, but first, where's everybody from? Type it in the chat really quick where, where everybody's from. I like to know the weather is kind of semi back to normal here in Atlanta. You know, we had a state of emergency because they thought we were going to get three inches of snow, but we didn't get anything but a slight dusting, but they did shut the whole city down. The whole metro area got shut down um, because they thought we were going to get three inches. And I know you guys who are in the Northeast are probably laughing at us um, for that, but, uh, yeah. So, okay. So we have Midland, Texas, the Bahamas, Jessica, we need to be with you right now in the Bahamas. Okay. Um, yeah. Detroit, Norfolk, Los Angeles, Dallas, Tennessee, Washington, DC, California, Cincinnati, Florida, Oakland, Dallas, Atlanta. Somebody's in Atlanta too. Simply Nessa. Hey girl, Seattle, North Carolina. It's 65 degrees here, very cold in the Bahamas. <laughs> 65 <laughs> still sounds really nice though. <laughs> Toronto, so Maryland, nice. Alexandria, Indianapolis. That's awesome. Miami, I was just in Miami, uh, South Carolina. Welcome everyone. Thank you guys so much for joining us live today, okay? So um, first, this is super informal. It's nothing like fancy, you know, but uh, which is why I'm just live streaming it here. Usually I would like, set up this whole workshop or webinar or whatever. But, you know, I like to have these kind of like girlfriend chats with you guys and, and introduce you to people who I think are really cool and who are really, really helpful. So I'm going to introduce you to, well, who I consider part of the Over Budget to Overjoy team. Not only is she part of the team, but she is one of my very close online friends. Her name is Elisa. So Elisa, why don't you tell everyone about yourself and about your website? Sure. Hi, everybody. Um, like Gia said, my name is Elisa, and I have my site is singlemamablueprints.com. I started that as just I felt the need to help other single parents with getting organized and meal planning, doing some financial freedom type of things, and budgeting. So that's how Gia and I kind of said, Oh, hey, we're going to, we would work together perfectly. Um, so as far as me and myself personally, I am a single mom to two boys. One of them is 20 and in college, and one of them is three. And yes, you heard that right, 20 and three. So I have one at each end of the spectrum, but it is amazing and fun every single day. So, and that is, that's, that's about it. I mean, I love to work from home, and I want to have other single moms and help other single moms have the money and the resources and the means to work from home and do what they want to do and not let money hold them back. Amen, sister. I love that. We definitely don't want to have mo let money hold us back from our dreams or yep. hold us back from walking to our purpose. Right. So, um, that's awesome. Welcome, Elisa. Welcome to the girlfriend chat. Um, so, okay. So we're here to talk about, uh, the grocery budget, and meal planning. I think these are two of the most like talked about things in my Facebook group from mm -hmm. quite a bit of you guys, mm -hmm. which by the way, if you haven't joined my Facebook group, join my Facebook group. The link is down below. But seriously, guys, cutting in on the grocery budget is something that I t tend to struggle with that I like to try to do um, every so often in meal planning. I've posted several videos on my channel about meal pl planning. I will insert a, a, a card here for the replay. But um, you know, it's something that I struggle with 
to be consistent, you know? So that's why I really wanted to find someone who was like an expert in really knowing how to, um, you know, cut that grocery budget down, get that grocery budget down and really knowing how, uh, like a really great system to make meal planning easy and to make it fun. Because I think as moms, you know, we wear, wear several, several hats. And one of those hats are, we got to cook. <laughs> a lot of the times we got to cook, we've got a meal plan, we've got to to go grocery shopping, we've got to stay within a certain budget because not only is it important for us to cut our grocery budget, we've got to cut expenses as much as we can, especially if we want to reach our uh, financial freedom goals, our debt-free goals, or just have extra money for your family. You don't want to, you know, spend that, use that extra money on groceries. You know what I mean? So let's see what they're saying in the chat. Okay. Yeah. For Fickle says meal planning is a struggle. Yes, girl. Trust me. I know <laughs> it's a struggle for me too. That's why we have Elisa here to help us. So, um, okay. So the first question I have for you, Elisa, is this, okay. how did you start? How did you get started with meal planning and saving on groceries? Was it, was it because it was a necessity and how did you become so good at it? Okay. So I started by just realizing that food was my number two expense, you know, be, behind my mortgage food was what I spent the most money on. And because I worked full time and I had at the time just one child at home, but still I was a single parent, like I said. So it's like, okay, um, I really need to make this whole dinner time thing work better for my budget. But also I was really tired of being stressed out, you know, running in, in the door and, and being like, oh crap, dinner. What are we gonna have? I totally forgot about it until now. Um, so it was kind of twofold. I wanted to save money, yes, but I also wanted to have that like nicer, come home, make dinner, not be crazy kind of a night. So I started looking into it and I went to a freezer meal workshop. So I don't know if you if you guys have ever been to one. If you have, put it in the chat because I'd love to know. I have never heard of a freezer meal workshop. Yeah, put it in the chat. Have you guys ever been to a freezer meal workshop? That and and do you guys struggle with meal planning and like me and saving on your groceries? Just you know, if you agree, tell us what you your struggle is as well. But yeah, I would love to know what is a freezer meals workshop. It's basically a, a group of women getting together and the you pick out the meals ahead of time. So you come with all of your groceries for like these 10 dinners that you're going to make. Okay. So all of, say you've got five other girlfriends there. The six of you are making the same 10 meals and you're putting them in your plastic bags and you're taking them home to put in your freezer. But it just gets, it's fun because you're hanging out and you're chatting and you're laughing and you're still getting to hang out with your friends, but you're doing something productive and making 10 meals for your family that's going to go in your freezer at home. Does that make sense? That is such a cute idea. Like, I love that. So you yeah. basically like meet up with your friends or, you know, a, a group of women or or men mm -hmm. if they're into it um, and, and everybody cooks a certain dish is that how it works and then or you make enough like how do you know if you, you're making enough it's kind it depends on the group and what your what dinners you're planning on making because the ones that i did i i want things as simple as possible the freezer meals that i like to make are the, the ones that don't need any cooking ahead of time everything in a bag or a container and then when it's time to make it you dump it out and you put it in the crock pot or put it in the oven or whatever so we kind of agreed on the meals ahead of time for the workshop and then, you know, had like a master grocery list. Everybody brought their groceries and we kind of each bagged our own and made our own, but we were sitting there chatting at the same time. I think that is so cute. I think I want to plan that for my next, you know, next time I try to meet up with my girlfriends quarterly, but I think I'm definitely going to plan that for us mm -hmm. to meet up and do, because at least we'll be productive and we can spend time. You can drink some wine and just relax. Like that is yeah. so cute. I love that. So, okay. So you went to the freezer meals workshop and you just fell in love with freezer meals. I did. I fell in love with freezer meals. So I started running and organizing workshops out of my own kitchen for other people to do. Um, and that, I always say like freezer meals is kind of the gateway drug to meal planning. Once you get, you kind of get addicted to having dinner already planned out kind of cause it's in the freezer and you, you've already defrosted it. You're like, Oh, okay. Well, I can go a step further and actually plan the rest of my meals for the week. So I got into like full blown meal planning after that. And I, I played around with a couple different ways, doing it for the week, doing it for two weeks. 
and I kind of settled on a groove for planning it for six weeks was my that was my groove like I would sit down for an hour or two plan out the next six weeks of meals plan out my grocery lists and then I didn't have to think about it for another month and a half which was a beautiful thing <laughs> Wow. Yeah, that is, that sounds beautiful. Um, I would love to have that, <laughs> you know, to just actually be motivated to do that too. Okay. Let's see what they're saying in the chat here. This says, it sounds ideal. Throw in a glass of wine in that. <laughs> I'm trying to get into crock pot meals says Chantel. Simply Teresa cooking says I spend, I like spend $400 a month on groceries, sometimes a little more, sort of feels like a monthly car payment. Yeah, groceries can totally be a monthly car payment, yes. something that we need to, you know, decrease for sure. And we're going to get to that. Um, and, and if you guys have questions, um, we'll make sure to answer those questions um, at the end with a live Q&A. We monthly meal plan. Maggie, Maggie says we monthly meal plan. The fewer trips to the grocery store, the better. But it's a struggle with space only having one refrigerator. I can see that. Yep. I can totally see that and staying on budget. As soon as this is over, I'm going straight to my group chat with my girls to get this organized. Oh, that's cute. That's a great idea. Okay. Uh, all right. So the next question I have for you, Elisa, is um, how do we save? This is a million dollar question, right? How do we save on our grocery budget? Okay. Um, there's a few things like I have a few shopping strategies that I utilize. Um, one, if you know me, I don't use coupons. I use them very sparingly. I have like my own little system for, I only use coupons for the top 10 most expensive things that I buy. Um, because I feel like you can just get kind of addicted to couponing and, and getting stuff and accumulating. And if you're, if you're wasting money on food just because you have a coupon, well, then you're wasting money on food. Um, so besides the, the non kind of couponing thing, I have a few strategies that I use. And obviously the first is meal planning and buying only what's on the meal plan and what's on your list. Obviously you're going to pick up snacks for, for your kids and whoever else is in the household and that kind of thing. But really knowing what's on, on the list and not deviating from that. The other thing, the next thing would okay. be to know your prices so um you know just just be aware of how much is how much are chicken breasts when they go on sale near you you know if, and you if you see mm -hmm. so by me they go on sale a lot i'm up in new york they go on sale a lot for a dollar 99 a pound at most grocery stores every couple of weeks every so often one of the one of the grocery stores will have a dollar 49 a pound well then i know hey i can stock up on that or if it's two ninety nine a pound, I'm not even going close to it. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like if you kind of know your prices and know what the sales are and what the standard price is for things, you can be a more educated shopper. Does that make sense? And I would say I stock up on my foundation. That makes a lot of sense. It does. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, because you don't know. If you don't know, <laughs> you don't know. Like if you don't know the prices and stuff, you don't know whether you're getting a good deal. You don't know whether you're wasting money. Um, you want to be able to get the things you need and feed your family well for as little as possible. That's the whole goal, right? Mm -hmm. So you said to only shop your list, just to recap, only shop mm -hmm. your list and to know your prices for sure. Yeah, those are those are the first two steps. So I have I have six steps in my my own personal shopping strategy. So I'm going to share all six if we have if we have the time, Gia. I'll keep going. Well, do you okay, so let's ask the chat. Do you guys want to know all six steps? I know you guys are going to say yes cuz I want to know all six <laughs> steps. But um do you guys want to type all um know all six steps? Type a yes in the comments if you're ready. If you're ready to slash that grocery budget, I need a a hype Yes. Okay. I need this in my life because I know I do for sure. And and only shopping your list is tough, especially if you go to the grocery store hungry, if you right. um, go to the grocery store distracted, you know what I mean? Um, you know how they'll have those little samples, especially when I go to Costco, they'll have these little samples and you'll be like, Oh, I want that. Ooh, that tastes really good. Let me get that. And that can really, um, 
really, really throw a wrench in the budget for sure. So make sure you guys go get some notes. I have my paper here and my pen. Go get a paper and pen so we can take some notes. So this will replay will be up on my channel for those interested uh, to if those if you have to go or you know you can't stay for the full hour. Um, again, the replay will be available on my um, on my channel. So okay, so let's recap really quick. The first step: only shop your list. Second step: know your prices. Okay, we're ready for the third step. Okay, and I just I want to answer Meggie Rocks twenty two, who's in the chat, who sure. asked if I sure. kept, keep a list of prices of items like on a spreadsheet. I don't because I. I really like grocery shopping and I like knowing the, the items that I'm buying. So it's easy for me to remember. But if it's not easy for you to remember and you want to get super organized, then go for it. I mean, there are some things, especially like the confusing things are out to me outside of the grocery budget, but are the, the paper goods. Like, I don't know which is a good deal for toilet paper because some's like the mega roll, the ultra mega roll, the super mega duper mega roll. And I'm like, okay, I don't know if that's a good deal or not. <laughs> <laughs> Those drive me insane. But you know, like if you wanted to be that organized, then yes, it will definitely help you. I would never say don't make a, don't make a spreadsheet and don't be organized. Um, and yeah, let's keep going. Yeah. So, okay, really quick. Karen Wilt Walton asks, what are your top high price items? I would assume meat, right? I, I'm assuming she's asking because I mentioned that I, the coupons for the high priced items, you really can't, it's really hard to find coupons on meat um, if you're yeah. buying real fresh meat and not, not things that are frozen, which I also try to avoid. Um, they are probably cheese. Mm -hmm. And my son has some allergies. So there are some like specialty foods and, and things, brands like um, there is a vegan cheese called Daya, which is about three times the price of normal cheese. And when I can get my hands on coupons for those, I will literally go to eBay or there's actually websites where you can purchase coupons for like eight cents, they're crazy cheap because you're not legally allowed to charge for coupons, um, but they can charge you shipping and handling to get them to you. When I see them for that and for like non-dairy milk, cause we also drink almond and coconut milk, I will pick them up for that. So cool. it's more of my staples, but that are still name brand things where they do put out coupons occasionally. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so what is the third step? So the third step is to stock up only on your foundations. And my founda my foundations, assuming you're not vegetarian or you don't have any you know food allergies or, or a specific needs diet, are meat, dairy, eggs, bread, and the, the produce and pantry items that I use over and over again. Mm. So those things are the a ton of time on this because time is money for me so yes. i don't want to waste a whole ton of time shopping and, and looking at different sale flyers and all of that i skim the front pages of the sale flyers if i see oh hey you know what uh diced tomatoes are on sale at Shoprite. i will pick them up because diced tomatoes i know is something that i always keep in my cabinet and i always have you know i always have in my my pantry that's one of my foundation items because i use a lot I make a lot of meals with diced tomatoes and okay. the, you know, the same with other things. Someone like, asked, where can you get, where can I get those coupons for eight cents for shipping? Oh, I don't know the names off the top of my head, but let me write it down and then I can, can I put it back in here, Gia? Like, can I type yeah, it in you the can comments? Leave a comp you can type it in the comments and I'll, I'll okay. type it for the replay. I will type it in the comments in the description box afterwards. Okay, so I'm just writing myself a note to get the addresses. There's a couple different ones for coupon sites. And always check eBay too, because they usually have a bunch. Okay. Um, so stocking up on foundations, and I shop at the warehouse stores. I know 
Gia, that you were a huge Costco girl. I yes. am both a Costco and a BJ's girl because I am fortunate enough to have them both near me. And I get different things at different places. But again, it's knowing your prices. Some things mm -hmm. in the produce department are a waste of money at Costco because you're not going to use them all. So it's, it's again, knowing your prices and knowing how much your family is going to eat. Do I buy a six pound bag of spinach every time I go to Costco and then throw it out almost every time? Yes, I do, but I'm learning. <laughs> um, that's funny. Now, okay, so that's number three. three. Number four is shop to save both money and time. Like I said, I am not a person to go from store to store to store. Um, I don't travel to every store that has a sale. I find stores that offer most of what I want to buy at a good price. Unless for some okay. odd reason I see like a flyer for my local grocery store and everything on the front page, which are the biggest sales, is everything I normally buy. But that's, you know, on a regular basis, I find stores that offer most of what I buy. And honestly, I rarely go to grocery stores anymore. I shop at Target a lot. And Walmart and Trader Joe's. I don't know if you guys have those all over the country. I mean, Target and Walmart, yes. But um, Trader Joe's. Yeah, I and love then, Trader Joe's. It's a little ways for me. But to yeah. me, I think it's worth just going there maybe once a month or once every six weeks just to stock mm -hmm. up on so many, like, staple stuff. I agree. And I love their produce. I mean, it's just so inexpensive. And most of it's organic, which I like. I feel like organic food. I know there's a big organic food argument, but for me and having a smaller family, the organic food tends to last longer. Organic milk will last yeah. me longer. Organic eggs will last me longer. So I do try to buy it when I can and, and when I find good prices on stuff. Um, my my biggest time and, and money saver for shopping though is shopping online. I know somebody said it in the chat that they shop Walmart online, and I didn't even know you could do that. Girl, Honestly. yes. Okay, so one of the Walmarts near me, you can shop and make your entire list, schedule the date and time that you wanna pick it up, and then you pull up. Now, not every Walmart does this, but just mm -hmm. certain Walmarts. You pull up, and they will come out with your groceries already, just wow, that, and everything to your product. Yeah, my Walmart doesn't do that, but the other grocery stores yeah. all have that option. And I know a lot of times people say, well, it costs an extra 10 bucks. You know what? You're going to spend an extra $10 if you're walking through the aisles and especially if you have your kids with you. So you're going to oh, save yes. that $10 that it takes besides the time it takes to physically grocery shop and do it yourself. You're going to save that $10 a million times over by not buying extra stuff that you see because you're window shopping. A couple of people asked if you use Ibotta or Checkout 51 or anything like that to save. Um, I I do when I can. I'm not a hardcore fan of some of the apps. Ibotta I like, Checkout 51, those are my two favorites. And the other one I like is, it's a wonderful question, Shopkick, which is not just about groceries. Oh, yeah. It's like you, you kind of get points for walking into stores and scanning some stuff. But, you know, when I go shopping at Walmart and I'm grocery shopping, I'll have that open and walk around and scan some stuff. And I've gotten some gift cards from there that I can then turn around and use on my groceries. Right. Um, oh, Walmart website ordering now. Walmart pickups free, Kia yeah. says. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, That's no, awesome. it's free, girl. Mm -hmm. It is awesome. awesome. I haven't started using it yet, but I'm definitely going to start because I could just send my husband. It's husband proof. That's what I love. It's husband proof because, you know, if you just write, get milk, we'll pick up the wrong brand or he won't look at the date. Mm -hmm. It just drives me crazy. So mm -hmm. I love the fact that you can be as detailed as you want to in like the notes. You could you could choose specifically what brand you want. I love that. It's so easy and convenient. Right. Um, and then the other the other online places too are not necessarily just your local grocery stores, but Amazon has food, Thrive Market, which is amazing. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. It's kind of like Costco mixed with Whole Foods. I have heard of that. I haven't used it yet though. I have used that and mm -hmm. they often have coupons for a free some free product, whether it's coconut oil or something something they just launched. So there's always a 
a coupon for a free product and there's always free shipping over a certain amount and they change it every so often. How are often. the prices? The prices are fantastic. Like they are oh, much wow. lower. I get all my facial products from there because I use all natural face stuff and they're about, I would say 40% off of what Target charges. So, wow. I really like it. And you can just, you can sign up for free and get a free 30 day membership. I have a link for that too. I'll have to give you that. We'll, we'll throw that in there. Um, 30 days for free. And then after that, it's $49 a year. So it's about the same price as like a Costco or, or a BJ's or a Sam's club. Hmm. That's cool. But again, you're not going right, to so the, the fourth step. Right. I mean, cause I think that that's, will save you money. For sure. You don't have to go into the store with your family. You can just pick it out online and have it directly shipped to you. What's right. the fifth step? The fifth step is trying to shop as little as possible. I was in a rhythm of shopping every two weeks. So I know that sounds daunting oh. for some people, but I would shop every two weeks. And when I was planning my meal plan, I would think in advance, okay, week one and three are meals with fresh fruits and vegetables. Week two and four are meals with frozen vegetables and soups and pantry items and things that I already have in the freezer. Oh, I never thought of that. I never thought to strategically plan it like that so that you don't only have to go grocery shopping twice a month. Yeah, it was, it, again, a huge time saver. And the more you stay out of the store, the less money you're going to spend there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. And then what's the sixth step? The sixth step is more of a comparison. Um, well, I have some comparisons for you, but it's making things homemade versus pre-made. So homemade, or, homemade over pre-made. Homemade over pre-made. Okay. Almost every time. There's very few things um, that will save you money on pre-made okay so and it tastes better too oh of course i mean it tastes better it's healthier for you you know what's going in your food a loaf of bread has so many ingredients in it now and a lot of sugar i mean bread is really high in sugar um because my son has such extreme food allergies and sensitivities from when he was born and he's now three I've really switched to having to make a lot of things homemade, but also noticing that it's been a huge difference in my budget and also how things taste, like you said. Um, so I have a couple of comp quick comparisons, things that I really like to make at home. Um, well, one thing I will never buy is water. I just, I will never ever buy water, bottled yeah. water. I agree. It's so bad for the environment too. I mean, I only buy it when I have, like I'm having a party or something like that or get together yeah. or have company, but yeah, it's just to buy it over and over for your family. It's, it's bad for the environment and you know, you're just better off just using, yeah. we use our refrigerator. <laughs> or by, I used to use a, a Brita water filter before I had a refrigerator that had a filter on it. I would just keep a thing of water in the fridge. But the this the other one I really do is chicken broth. Oh, okay. now th there I don't make that homemade. I do occasionally if I have say a random chicken carcass. I made a roasted chicken or something. But BJ's and Costco has this chicken broth called. It's a little jar, and it's called Better Than Bouillon. And it's like a concentrate, so you just use a little teaspoon to make a full cup of broth. So that costs about nine cents per cup versus buying chicken broth in cartons, which will is 10 times more. It's about 95 cents a cup. Yes, I've heard of that. Um, I do buy my chicken stock though, because I just, I don't, like, where do you store it all? But that's, do you store it like in a mason jar? No, this is even better. This Well, if I make it myself, I store it in containers in the freezer. Okay. Okay. But I don't, this is one of those things where I really don't make it myself because it's so cheap to buy at Costco or BJ's, the little um, better than bullion concentrated. It's like a goop. You open it mm -hmm. up and it's like putty. Um, so it stores less. So it's literally like a little tiny tub 
and it's $5.99 or $6.99 around me at Costco. And that you will get something crazy like um, 76 cups out of wow. that little tiny jar. So that takes up so much less space in your fridge than those big cartons do from the grocery store. And it's a tenth of the price. Wow. So that's one I thing I will, like, I will never buy chicken broth in a container. I will just use that little one and it tastes more homemade. It's really, mm. it's really delicious. So I usually have a beef one and a chicken one in my fridge. They even have vegetable and they might even have a fish one. I'm not sure. Um, wow. What else? So bread? homemade over pre-made. Yeah. Making your bread, bread homemade is going to cost you 73 cents a loaf versus $3 and 21 cents a loaf or a dollar 50 yeah. ish. Or if you're buying like just now, a how often do you make bread. these things? Because it's hard, you know, when you're short on time, like mm -hmm. this the thought of making all that and then like having to organize a schedule around it. Like, okay, I'm going to make bread this week or I'm going to make chicken stock this week. Like, how do you organize that? It's kind of based on my needs, but I, on my needs for the item. But I always say like, it's really hard to, when you're meal planning and you're looking at your grocery and dinner time stuff, for lack of a better word, it's hard to save time and save money. Cause there's lots of things that you can do to save time, like buying pre-made and buying pre-cut veggies in the produce department. But those things are not going to save you money. It's hard. It's really hard to focus on both. So since we're talking about saving money, these are the things, yes, they do cost you a little bit extra in time, but they're going to be a huge, make a huge impact in the long run on your grocery budget. Um, bread is probably one of those ones that takes a while, right? So I would usually do that like maybe on a Saturday or Sunday. Sundays, I typically do nothing anyway. We go to church, we hang out, and Sunday is my, I don't touch work. I don't try to make any plans because I want that family day. So I'll make a loaf of bread. I agree on with Sunday. Sundays. It's a good day. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everybody needs that. You need that. You need that downtime. You need that like, nope, mm -hmm. sorry, can't do it. It's Sunday. <laughs> right. All right. So let's start talking about meal planning because I know that is another huge um, topic for my audience and for me just to stay consistent. Like, okay, so if you're an absolute beginner, where would you have someone start when it comes to meal planning? If you're an absolute beginner, I would say first start off with just a week. Don't go crazy and try to do a month or six weeks. I do teach people how to do it on a monthly basis because I think in the long run that is easiest. But if you're just getting your feet wet in meal planning, I would say stick with make it out for a week and start with meals you already know are favorites and you already know how to make. And if that is tacos and hamburgers and spaghetti with jarred sauce, then that's what you make next week. It's just a matter of getting in the habit of getting it on the meal plan, getting it on the refrigerator or wherever you want to post it, and knowing what you're going to make every day. It just gets yourself in that like mental habit of doing. Right. It's not about making crazy new meals that you found on Pinterest. Okay. It's about yeah, it's feeding that's your where family me, and saving that's time. Me. That's me. I feel like the only time <laughs> I want to make a plan is if I find some inspiration on Pinterest mm -hmm. that I want to make. Or I'll see a buzz of one of those tasty little videos on Facebook yeah. or something or Instagram. And yeah. it'll be something that looks so good and I want to make it. And that will motivate me to meal plan. But what you're saying is we need to look at it from like what our family just needs. You know, don't try to like you know, constantly find inspiration on Pinterest because that's me all day is if I don't find the inspiration on Pinterest, I'm like, ah, oh, well, we just won't, we'll just wing it this week. <laughs> we'll just have tacos every night. <laughs> I do this. Yeah, so how and I love to cook. So I'm constantly on yeah. Pinterest, but then you get in that overwhelm of, and I do this in the grocery store too, before I used to meal plan, like, oh, well look, mushrooms, those look delicious. I'm gonna get those and I'm gonna make this and then I'm gonna do this. And then before you know, you've got like 14 meals worth of stuff in your Pinterest head going or <laughs> yes. in your head from the grocery store going and you don't have that much time and then things are going bad in your refrigerator. So the meal plan yes. will help you stick to not wasting food too. So I say, start out simple. If you, if you really enjoy cooking and you want to try out new meals, then have one, 
one meal I'm laughing because I when my oldest was younger when he was about five and I had just started to learn how to cook we used to have mystery night and he hated it because he did not like to try new foods <laughs> at all. Like he is a give me meat and potatoes. I need to know what I'm eating kind of thing. So I used to have, we used to call it mystery night. And it was only mystery night because I was making a new meal that neither one of us had had before. And it was going to be a mystery. That is hilarious. <laughs> so yeah, he was not, he was like, oh no, no, it's mystery night. Can't we have pizza? No. <laughs> no, we cannot. Okay, so how do we stay? Um, I would say add that in. Add in, add in one, one night a week or one night every two weeks where you're going to try a new meal if you like to do that. How do you, we stay consistent and motivate ourselves to continue on meal planning? Um, I would say, well, to motivate yourself, would remind yourself of your why, right? Remind yourself that you want to stick to your grocery budget or you want to feed your family healthier meals. Whatever it is that motivates you to want to start meal planning, jot that down somewhere so that you want to continue. Um, but to stay consistent, I would say put it in your calendar. You've got to yeah. schedule that time to one, sit down and make the meal plan. And mm -hmm. that's why I used to do it as little as possible, like every month or every six weeks. And then also I would schedule the time for growing, going grocery shopping. So that I didn't want to be like, oh, well, we could use a few things around here. I'm going to go to the grocery store right now. No, because it's in my calendar to go the day after tomorrow. Right. Well, okay. I heard you mention earlier, you said you think that freezer meals are the gateway to like the perfect to, to meal planning like a pro. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that? And how can everyone get started on this today? Okay, so freezer meals, I love the ones I love. I told you were the ones that don't need a lot of cooking or prep ahead of time, and just basically throw them in a bag and dump them in a crock pot or in the oven. They're if if you look online, they're also called dump meals, and I just I can't get on board with <laughs> that saying nasty. that. <laughs> it's like you can't you that going along with something I'm going to eat does not correlate well. Um, so. The ones I like to do are the really super simple ones, and there's a ton of resources online, but I also have on my site a free seven-day um, email course that will walk you through getting started with freezer meals. And, and just the link for that, you guys, is down below. The link to her free uh, freezer course is in the description box. Yes. So it's a free freezer meal course. It's just an email. There's a workbook to go along with it that will give you like a meal planner, a freezer meal planner, um, and even an inventory sheet for your freezer so that you know what's in there. And it'll just take you through the, by the end of the week, you'll have, if you follow the, the steps and do the recipes that I end up giving, then you'll have six meals in your freezer to be able to pull out when you're for, you know, you forgot about dinner or you just want to say, oh, you know what? We're kind of out of groceries today. I'm going to make this tomorrow night for dinner. Someone asks, um, how do you know the length to store freezer meals? I guess, how long do they last in the freezer for? Like, how do you know? Um, I mean, would you know? I would say most things will last in a freezer about three to six months. There are some things like cheeses and stuff that okay. don't freeze well past that. And I don't typically have those in the freezer meals that I make anyway. You know, it's usually like vegetables and meat and chicken broth and tomatoes or or something like that, soups and things that will will freeze well. But yeah, three to six months. I mean, if you're not if you're not eating it after six months, you're never going to eat it. True that. I mean, to me, it's like if you're not eating it within a month, you know, it's like when yeah. are you going to eat it at that point? You know, you mm -hmm. can't. And you plus you have to organize your freezer so that you can see your meals. And like yes. you said, that inventory checklist would be really helpful as well too. And you can kind of keep an inventory checklist of your freezer meals, what you have in there mm -hmm. in the freezer. Yes. And that's all included in the, like I said, it's totally free. Um, it's just put in your email address and then every morning you'll get an email with what to do that day and you'll get the workbook right away actually. Right. And also her meal planning bundle. Can you tell everybody what's included in the meal planning bundle as well? In the meal planning bundle. Yeah. So that link is below also. So that is simply four different meal planners that you can print out. One is weekly just for dinner. One is weekly breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If you want to 
want to plan that out. And one is a two week meal plan and then one is a month. So depending on how often you want a meal plan, one of those will, <laughs> will fit the bill. That's, that's awesome. Okay. Um, let's see if I have any more questions. Um, Sandy says, can I store bread in the freezer for how long? Yeah, you can definitely store bread in the yeah. freezer um, and the mm -hmm. refrigerator. You can even store it in the refrigerator. It'll, it'll last longer than if it was sat out on the counter. Um, the freezer for how long? Um, I mean, I've had bread in the freezer. I probably, because I buy a special kind for my son, it probably is like three months and it's fine. No big deal at all. Right, right. Someone asked, does it matter if it's store-bought bread? Yeah, I freeze store-bought bread all the time yeah. and it lasts yep. fine. Yep. But um, basically everything that we talked about today, I mean, Elisa really knows her stuff. Her freezer meal course is amazing. I've signed up for it. And um, her her templates themselves are really, really, really helpful. Uh, so I highly recommend you guys um, enter your information. All you have to do is enter your name and email address and it'll be automatically emailed to you. But um, everything that Elisa talked about today is included in her course, The Meal Planning Blueprint, which is a part of my course, over budget to overjoyed. So as most of you know, already know that I did launch a course called over budget to overjoyed. And part of my course, uh, which is the VIP package is Elisa's course, the meal planning blueprint, because I listen to you guys, I know saving um, with your grocery store budget and meal planning, it's, it's tough. It's tough as a single mom. It's tough as a working mom. It's tough as a stay at home mom, because to me, like we are all busy moms. So um, Elisa's course, the meal planning blueprint is a part of my course because I think um, cutting your grocery budget is imperative, especially if we want to reach our financial goals, if we want to, if we want to pay our way out of debt, any kind of way to find that excess cash. So you don't have to waste it on, on, on getting food for your family. Not that getting food for your family isn't important. Of course, healthy meals for our families are important, but we want to get there in the cheapest way possible. So, um, in the link down below, there's a special package and a special coupon code. If you guys are interested, you can purchase my course, Elisa's course, and I'm throwing in a bonus called The Productive Life, which is a course that is going to teach you how to get you to accomplish your goals in 12 weeks, how to gain an extra six hours a week and really be productive. So we're hitting all three of the main um points that people like to get better at, you know, for New Year's resolutions or goals, you know, we want to be more productive, we want to pay off all of our debt, we want to, you know, learn how to meal plan and, and um, cut our grocery bill, okay, all of that for 30% off, I have a coupon code in my description box, when you're checking out, you can put this coupon code in there that's only good until tomorrow, okay, uh, this coupon code that's in the description box if you're interested, so um, I am just really excited about it, I think it's a great deal, um, and I think you'll get so much information from um, not only my course, but Elisa's course and the Productive Life course that's all included in this bundle um, is, awesome. It's awesome. Because if you have been wondering, you know, if you've been wanting to um, pay your way out of debt, or you just want to manage your finances better, or you, you finally want this year to be the year that you take control and take action and stop just talking about how you want to cut your grocery bill and stop just talking about how you want to pay your way out of debt, you can use this time right now to take action because it all starts with a decision, right? A decision to want to do better. Take this time right now to invest in yourself so that you can have the tools that will enable you to have the life that you want to have. You know, um, Elise is an expert. I, I'm definitely, you know, if you guys know, if you've watched any of my Debt Free Fridays, you know how I feel about budgeting and living a debt free life and teaching people uh, my proven strategy on how to get out of debt, stay out of debt, how to have a healthy relationship with money, setting up seeking funds, reconciliation, planning for your future. You know, we wanna, we wanna do all these things essentially so that we can have better lives and we can have better lives for our children, right? Because we, we owe it to them. So um, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comment um, box down below. But like I said, the coupon code is good until tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Uh, the coupon code's in the description box. You have to lose, use the link in the description box um, in order to get 
access to all three of the courses that I just talked about, which are my course, Over Budget to Overjoyed, Elise's course, The Meal Planning Blueprint, and um, the Productive Life course. websites for homemade eyeglasses at no sorry i can't read for homemade eggless and soy slash dairy free bread i don't want my family doesn't have any allergies like that so i wouldn't be able to answer you do you know any elisa we can't hear you that's because you were muted there we go <laughs> Um, PetiteAllergyTreats.com, I was just typing that in the chat, is, oh, I can't because it's a web address. Okay, Petite Allergy Treats, um, Petite Allergy Treats website is really good. Um, I have, if anybody's on Pinterest, I'm on there as Single Mama Blueprints, and I have a lot of meal planning and allergy-friendly boards. Um, I have a lot of food boards in general. So if you want to go check out on there, you can look at my boards and see there's lots of, lots of stuff and especially bread. Cause bread, honestly, um, bread doesn't use eggs typically. And it's some, you know, you can, you can definitely get a dairy free bread. All you would need is maybe like an almond milk or a coconut milk sandy. So hopefully that helps you do a quick Pinterest search if you're on there because you'll find some really good ones. And I've only pinned ones that I've either tried or friends have tried. So. Right. Um, sorry. <laughs> I was no, it's okay. um, yeah. So do, if you guys have any other questions for me um, or Elisa, we'd be glad to answer any of them. Let's see. Yeah, absolutely. But um, you, wanted, you went through what was in your course. Do you want me to show to show a quick overview of what's in the meal plan? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, please do. Let me get there. But so it's five different modules. It takes you through organizing your pantry, your freezer, and your refrigerator. It also takes you through the grocery strategy. So the ones that I shared with you, that was one portion of that entire how to save money on groceries section that's in the course. And, and then it goes through freezer meals and what I call rescue meals, which are kind of like pantry meals that you always keep on hand. So there's a specific system I love that, that, concept that I use of for that. Rescue meals. That is so yeah. ingenious to me. And keeping it separate, like having a space dedicated just for those meals is key. Um, so I have a specific system for that. And then I go through like apps and cooking tools. I recommend cookbooks and websites. And then there's obviously the meal planning formula, the blueprint itself of how to create a formula that you're going to be able to use over and over and over again once you learn the formula. So it's a it's a full it's a full on meal planning course that will will have you covered. And Dami, who is a student in my course, she said the course is amazing, guys. Thank you so much, Dami. Oh, and thanks, I think Dami. that she's in your course as well, right? She is. Yes, Lisa. Yeah, yes, she is. Uh, that's awesome. Okay, so everybody's asking to recap the um, six steps. Okay, if we could just do a quick recap on what the the six steps are. Sure. Um, so number one is buy only what's on the meal plan and on your list. Step two would be to know your prices, especially of the things you buy often and the things that are more expensive that you buy like meat and dairy. Step three is stock up on foundations, your foundations when they're on sale. So your foundations could be different than mine, but mine are meat, dairy, eggs, bread, and produce and pantry items that I use over and over again that I try to always keep on hand. Step four is shop to save money and time. So use some alternative things like online grocery shopping or your local Walmart, like some people are saying they had Walmart or a local grocery store that will allow you to shop online and deliver it to you or you can go pick it up and they just put it in your car for you. Um, you know, focus on shopping to save money and time and not 
not just money and not going to a million grocery stores every week. Shop number five, sorry, step number five is shop every two weeks. Try to really stay out of the stores. The less you're there, the less money you'll spend. And then step six is home, home make instead of pre-made. So see what you can do as far as making things ahead of time. Make a giant batch of homemade chicken nuggets if your kids like them instead of buying a bag of Tyson in the freezer section for three times the cost. And that's it. Those are the six steps. Yes. And again, Elisa goes in, she dives deep in her course about mm -hmm. um, how to organize these steps, how to um, accomplish all these steps and how to fit that in for freezer meals, how to fit that in for meal planning. All of that is in right. her, is it, she goes in, in depth in her course, the meal planning blueprint. So um, it's definitely worth it. Um, if you guys didn't know what's all in my course, um, the first module I go over having the right money mindset and having a healthy relationship with money, how to do that. So I think that's the most important. And a lot of people ignore that step. And when you ignore that step and you pay your way out of debt, you will find yourself back in debt typically within a few years. So having a healthy relationship with money. Then we talk about um, what uh, type of budget is best for you and your family, which I think is zero base budgeting. Zero base budgeting is imperative um, for living a debt free life. Then we talk about how to set that budget up um, it's easy in your family, how to um, set up sinking funds, how to set up a debt repayment plan that works because um, it's not a it's not a race. It's a lifestyle change. There's no prize for the person who gets out of debt the quickest. We just want to make sure that you get out of debt and that you don't find yourself having to get back in debt. So I would never advise you to throw all your cash at your, your debt. So I go into how to um, define that, how to define what, what how much of your cash needs to go to your debt and how much of your cash needs to be saved. And then we talk about sinking funds and how to set those up and a list of sinking funds that I think every family should have. I talk about reconciliation. It only takes me 15 minutes a month to really reconcile my budget because in order to make a budget successful, it needs two things. You need to be consistent and you need to reconcile. If you don't do those two things, then all you have is an Excel, a beautiful Excel spreadsheet or beautiful paper with, with numbers written on it. It's not really a budget and then we talk about family and finances and how to discuss and share with your friends and family your new lifestyle change and how important it is to you my husband even has a lesson um, talking of talking to the men who are taking the course because I know a lot of couples are taking my course cur currently so we have a lesson plan for just the men and how you know even though I'm the one in the day-to-day -day budget itself you know, my husband is still very much the leader of our family and, and he talks about how that's important and how it's important to live a debt-free life and lead your family into a debt-free life. So he talks about that and how to discuss, talk to your spouse about money, period. You know, that's the number one cause of divorce is, is um, money. So we, we touch base on that a little bit in the course as well. And it, it pretty much covers all of your bases. Like I said, um, um, the students that I have already currently enrolled have, have given me awesome feedback and I'm really, really happy and excited. Enrollment will be closing soon. So if you're interested, like I said, the link is down below. Use the coupon code down below to get 30% off of my course. It's a bundle with my course, Elisa's course, and the Productive Life course that teaches you how to be more productive, gain an extra six hours a week, and finally finish your to-do list. So I'm super, super excited. Someone Fickle says, I might sign up with my husband. Glad you mentioned this. Oh, th awesome. Thank you. Again, the coupon code is good until 8, 8 o'clock tomorrow night. So if you're watching the replay, you have until tomorrow, which is January 12th at 8 p.m. But I'm going to leave this up on my channel because I think it's such valuable information that Elisa is sharing with us today about meal planning and um, freezer meals and grocery shopping and, and sticking to your grocery budget. So I'm definitely going to hold myself to it and hold myself accountable. And I'll be sharing my journey here on my channel about meal planning and, and really getting my way into starting freezer meals and everything like that. Hopefully, Elisa will come back and live stream with us um, again to uh, hold us all accountable, I should say. Maybe uh, I can come down to Atlanta. We'll do a freezer meal workshop live online yes! or something. <laughs> that would be so fun. We should do a live freezer meal workshop. How fun would that be? It'd be kind of hard yeah. with the camera though. <laughs> I guess I'd have to pull it in the, into, the, into the kitchen, but that would be so fun to do. Would, would you guys watch that? Type a one in the comments if you would watch that. <laughs> I feel like that would be so fun. 
I do too. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that would be fun. I mean, at least it would motivate us to get it done, right? Mm hmm That's hilarious. So are there any other questions that you guys might have? Raquel said, yeah. See, everybody's, yeah, everybody's saying one. they would watch it. <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> we need to tell, we need to totally do that. I'm gonna hold you to that for sure. Okay. We need to totally do that too. Mary said, thank you so much for this. I'm going to check it check with my husband and hopefully we can get in on the course. I'm in Columbia, South Carolina. Awesome. That's awesome, guys. Don't forget, download those freebies, the, the, the freezer meal course and the meal planning template of Elisa's. They're in the description box of the video. Really, really super helpful, guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you to Elisa for sharing her wealth of knowledge with, about grocery budgets and um, meal planning. Thanks for having me. This was awesome. We really, really appreciate it. We had a, such a good time. And I guess I'll see you guys all in my next video. Okay, bye guys. Bye.